everybody. Welcome to another episode of Empowering the Prophetic. I'm Andrew Walker. This is Ronald McGowan with me here. And we just want to welcome you guys and thank you for joining us again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part. And um, what we're always talking about every week is things to do with the prophetic and what God's doing now, what we see God doing, and then also just prophetic training. You see uh, how the prophetic trains us, teaches us, how we hear God, how that uh, you know, parlays out to our personal and practical life. So thanks for joining again. Wendell McGowan here. Wendell, how you doing? What's going uh, on, brother? Doing good. We're in the middle of a battle, but that's what it's all about. Yeah, amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, the prophetic's all about faith. It's not about how you can tell somebody's future or be a fortune teller. It's about faith. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so why we spend so much time on the prophetic is because it's what is the very foundation of Christianity, mm -hmm. of our walk with Jesus is faith. And the prophetic is the, is I'm going to call it the freeway that everything in the kingdom mm -hmm. runs on. So, you know, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about faith. I, I wrote a little bit of a, some thoughts about there will be a new faith for the future. Mm. And, I, and I think we're right in the middle of birthing it because you're getting all kinds of fear. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick and tired of all the fear. Mm. And, and honestly, even if you're a person of faith, that stuff starts to try to stick on you. It does. And so, you know, we were just talking about ways to combat that fear. Number one is faith, but that's yeah. an easy word. We need to define you know, what faith is made up of. Actually, faith is made up of three things. Love, joy, and peace. Mm -hmm. Love, joy, and peace. Amen. But but as I was thinking about it, I thought, <clears throat> well, we've got to get this new level of faith connected, not just with believing God, but with peace that passes all understanding. That's right. For the God of peace is crushing Satan underneath our feet. Amen. amen. And uh, so, you know, we're putting that together. And the third thing is truth. Mm -hmm. And you talked a little bit about that. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's good. You know what? Um, if you think about new levels of faith, um, you know, the Bible tells us that we move from faith to faith and glory to glory. So there, there's lots of levels, I think, of faith that have been moving about and, and increasing throughout the ages, throughout this age and the times of this age. And what I mean is, when the Bible says that where darkness abounds, faith all the more. When times get darker, grace, grace all the more. Grace grows. And when grace grows, which is the power to do, it's the power to access new levels. And uh, new levels of faith, especially is what we're talking about. See, grace is the, is the action that manifests faith. You know, without grace, it's very hard to have faith. You can't believe for a healing unless there's grace to believe it. And the truth that the scripture says, by his stripes were healed. Mm -hmm. So, and, and there's all kinds of scripture. If there's ever been a time we need to memorize and meditate on the word is now. Because mm -hmm. that's the only way we're going to fight all this fear that's out. Everything, you turn on. You can't go to work without getting uh, something jabbed in your arm. Whether you do or not, mm -hmm. that should not be a mandate of freedom. Right. And so we're kind of stand against that nonsense. It's good if people do that, but if they don't, it should not be a disqualification for your privilege to go to games or in stores or airplanes or or even to church. Mm -hmm. Some churches even mandate it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were talking here. We had just a sweep of COVID here, and we had over forty people get it, and not one person died. Mm -hmm. One woman, 89 years old, is well and back. Mm. So you don't listen to those kind of stories. Mm -hmm. All we hear is, oh, my God, if you get it, you're going to die. No, no. Jesus will carry you through. But it takes faith mm -hmm. with peace and then the truth that sets you free. And, you know, when you when you don't have, when you, when you have faith, you know, in, the Bible says by grace, through faith. That's well, right. Exactly what you were saying. Grace is that power to really access the levels of faith that God has for you. It's by grace through faith that you are saved. But not only that, when you have faith, you will have peace. Yes. So if your if your peace is being destroyed or taken down, just know that there's faith there for you. 
it, to to grab hold of the peace that's yours. And you have to take all of this stuff is access by faith. I mean, salvation is access by faith. He said God has for you is access by faith. All of the fruits of the Spirit are access by faith. All of the gifts of the Spirit are access by faith. If you don't have faith, you're not accessing anything. And, and, and what that means is believing that you have it. Well, I see some pre people put faith in faith. Yeah. Instead, instead of realizing, no, it's, it's, a, it's an attitude. It is a position you have because you've got the peace of God that passes all understanding. And that will produce faith. Mm -hmm. Always, it's not you just saying I believe. It's that peace produces faith. I really feel like there's a revelation on this. If you'll catch this, if you can keep your peace through this hellacious time from the war that's going on and, and that we stepped out of and, and and all of that nonsense. But if you keep your peace, you'll grow in faith, and the truth will set you free. Yeah. And, and, and if you think about it, you know, one of the things the enemy's trying to do right now is not only tear down faith, tear down peace, trying to tear down the truth, trying to tear down joy, all the things that you're talking about right now. And then keeping your peace is a part of faith because if you, it takes faith to keep your peace. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. Now, saying I believe it is one thing. But where the rubber meets the road is what are you doing with what you believe? Yeah, and see, and that's the issue. Because the peace, you know, I always tell people your faith grows little by little. And, and, and when you get peace, you take that and act on it. And then when you get another assault, the enemy tries to destroy all the faith that you've stepped into. But you go back and grab that and go to another level. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I don't think people really understand. They think they got to have this giant position of faith. It will come, but it grows little by little. And, uh, you know, Scripture, even in the Old Testament, you know, there was a picture of faith is when uh, the Lord told the children of Israel, when you go in to possess the land, go in little and little, mm -hmm. lest the beasts of the field overtake you. Well, let me give you a little modern-day translation of that. All this fear is all of the giants trying to overtake you. Mm -hmm. So you've got to let you got to get around people of faith, people who believe God, even people who's got healed, people who's got delivered. All those will give you measures of faith. Amen. And so, so thinking about you know the prophetic and how that works, and, and just so you know, you, you remember the foundation of the church is the apostle and prophet. The cornerstone is Jesus, and so the apostle and prophet are who the church is building on. So half of your foundation as a church and as faith is the prophetic. It's half of that. It's yeah. half your foundation. Yeah. Which is why we're always telling everyone and always teaching everyone it's important to hear God because that's half of your position in faith, your ability to access all the levels of faith in God's voice. And how do you grow in faith? I'll tell you first, number one, you start believing that what you're hearing is God. Number two, you start acting and obeying those words of faith. Number three, you see the result know that it was God on the other side of it, and that continually grows your faith from glory to glory. That's to move in that. And then once you have faith, right, and you're like, man, my faith really is working, that brings so much peace because you realize there's nothing that can possibly break that. One builds upon the other. Yeah, that's right. And, and a scripture, just to back that up, is Galatians 5, verse 6. Mm -hmm. It says, for when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, and again, Jesus is faith. Mm -hmm. uh, Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. And this was the argument of Israel mm -hmm. in the early days of Christianity to prove that you were a Christian, whether you were circumcised or not. Mm -hmm. But this is what it says is what is important is faith expressing itself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now that that's a heavy and that word love there is through agape, mm -hmm. which is God's love. That's how you get real faith. So you know, I think that we're in an hour where the Lord is doing such a work. It looks like everything is being destroyed. It looks like our world is falling apart. No, it's it's being uh, pruned. Mm -hmm. It's being yeah. circumcised. Even what this scripture says mm -hmm. is being circumcised. God's taken the unuseful flesh away. And we, we've just grown so accustomed to, to a golden spoon, mm -hmm. actually a golden calf. 
the Lord's melted down the golden calf right. that we've all grown up with to give us uh, a silver lining, mm-hmm. which is faith in him, trusting him. I'm telling you, I'm at a point in my life where I don't do anything without seeking his face. Mm-hmm. From taking medicine to eating, mm-hmm. you know, I've got a, 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 a little bit of a limp with what's going on with me, but I'm trusting God in it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what all of us should do is trust God yeah. in that. Yeah. Um, you know, freedom, thinking about freedom, what freedom means and what it costs. You know, uh, the Bible says that he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So freedom is something that Christ paid his life for. He laid his life down for it. Uh, you know, so when you think about your freedom being stolen, when your freedom is being trampled upon, you've got to understand how important freedom is and how important it is to have. Because Jesus paid for that freedom for us. And he is not going to give up on that. He's mm-hmm. not going to let that stuff go. And we got to do the same. Listen to this right there in Galatians. It says, for you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. But do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. But serve one another through love. That's what we've done yeah. in America. Yeah, exactly. And and so so look, don't don't give your freedoms up. I mean, it, don't, don't do that. Don't just trade it in for something that people are telling you that you need to do that you know the bible is directly against there's absolutely no reason to do that but stand firm stand firm and um you know there's things that we can do to make sure everybody is we're not trying to make waves or nothing but we're also not going to just lay down and say no you can just tell me whatever you want to do if what you're telling me to do is directly contradicting what god has already told me to do you can already see in the bible that the apostles so many before them were thrown in jail for those exact things. And they said, listen, you can tell us what you want. But God's already spoken to us. You've got to do what he says, not what you say. Exactly. And faith, this new kind of faith, will create dreams that will become realities. Mm. And sometimes we've dreamed and wonder what's going on. It's because God was waiting to give us the, I'm just going to call it, the content of a new kingdom level of faith. Not the faith of our past or what we've had in the past mm-hmm. is different. Right. But like you quoted faith, we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. We've quoted that scripture, but not really understood it. Mm-hmm. And we're in an hour where that's happening. And even a a, a a scripture that backs that up is Acts 2 17. And it says in the last days, see everybody says this is the end. No, it's not the end. We're in the last days. Which means God's going to clean this thing up mm. so we can be the bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish mm. to bring the greatest harvest the world's ever seen. It looks like they're trying to shut down churches. Churches are shutting down because you can't come in if you don't have a mask <laughs> or you haven't been jabbed. Give me a break. The church is a place where, where the life of God mm. prospers. Not to say you shouldn't you know, be, be careful and listen to your own conscience. But, but personally, we just don't let the government dictate where our freedom lies. We, who the sun sets free, is free indeed. Let me finish this scripture. I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. Come on. So there's the new dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike. And they will prophesy. Come on, amen. Come on, how much better do you need to know about prophecy than that scripture right there? Amen. Come on. And what faith is. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things seen. That's what we've always said. But it, we've never understood that the definition of faith is love, joy, and peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of said it all there, didn't I? Amen. That's a good one. I mean, if you think about that, there they are just quoting Joel chapter 2. Yeah. And so that was God's promise in the Old Testament that manifested itself in the in, book of Acts, which we live in that covenant today and that age is now. Um, and then, and, and so that's for you, you know, the prophetic prophesying, learning to do that. Uh, hearing God's uh, prophecy and, and moving in the prophetic, learning to prophesy, even moving into an office prophet uh, position that God may call someone to, all starts learning to hear God. Yeah, yeah. And so you have to be in a culture where they believe that. And truthfully, if you don't have a culture of the prophetic, it's hard for the corporate body to hear God because all they think that they can hear God from is from the man who stands behind mm-hmm. the pulpit. 
and certainly they should have the word of the Lord. They should be giving courage and, and understanding. But everyone who sits in a chair, everyone has a prophecy, has a song and a hymn. Mm -hmm. And we need to start building the church that way. We recognize that it sits and dances within the congregation. And uh, I'll tell you, this is a season where this faith is going to produce the healing of broken relationships mm -hmm. that will be mended. Amen. Uh, you believe that? I do believe that. Look at that. Uh, go to go to uh, Mount. Go to these right here that you got. And I'll, uh, we'll talk about that. broken relationships that will be mended. If you think about that, uh, how everything going on right now in the world has just just really divided everybody right down the middle. You're either black, or you're white. You know what I mean, it's just one or the other. It's a black and white thing now. It has no. There's no shades of gray. There's no middle ground. You're either this way or that way. And it's being separated like that because that's what the Bible says. The wheat and the tares, they'll come up together. And God's going to separate those things down the middle. What we got to do is realize that there's so many that we have prayed for, our parents have prayed for, our grandparents have prayed for, that are in our families that need to come to the Lord. And so don't give up praying for them, prophesying over them, declaring what God's going to do in their lives. and Get those relationships mended and repaired. You know, God's just going to start to move in yeah. a way like we've never seen. You're going to see revival start to break out, even an awakening. I mean, you might, we might see an awakening. Uh, level I think move. we're going to see an awakening, and, and, and where it's just going to move across um, at least this nation for sure and around the world. But you, you're going to see a, a dropping of the Spirit of God, a move of the Spirit that's so big that you will see relationships that you thought never could be fixed. Yeah, it's the end of what we used to know, but it's the beginning of something new. Mm. And God is not done with this nation or this people or his church. Mm. He's just reshaping us. He's pruning us. He's getting us ready to carry the weight of his glory like we've never seen. And so that's why we got to mend our relationships with people because some of those people you got uh, issues with are carrying a piece of the treasure mm. for what we're going to need. Hmm. And and it will be like shocking what happened because the enemy set all this up. The enemy's the one who divides. He's the one who's divided our nation, black and white, men and women. People don't even know what, uh, I'm sorry, what gender they are. You're born the way God made you. And this may upset somebody, but God made you a man or a woman. You may it's have true. different characteristics, but quit trying to be something that you're not or because we can scientifically do it. That's just yeah. not, you know, that's one of the reasons why the Lord tore down the Tower of Babel, because they thought they were so smart they could just go to heaven. Mm. That's kind of what's going on with us. Is scientifically, we're changing people's identity and their genders and doing all kinds of crazy mm. stuff. And we need to quit. Well, I'm not going to get on well, too you know what? Box. Just, just what you're saying there, though, when, when people do that, when they go into that mutilating of who they are, not only spiritually and mentally, but physically, mm -hmm. it will bring you absolutely no relief mm -hmm. to the core reason of what's destroying them. In fact, not only will it not bring you relief, it's going to take you in the place of your life that's going to be the worst, most destructive, most... Uh, and, and I've worked with these folks, and here's what they will say to me. This is the nastiest thing I've ever seen in my life. And that's the truth, because the truth will set you free. So if you're struggling with those kinds of things, don't listen to that nonsense the enemy is speaking to you. Remember, the only answer is Jesus Christ. That's right. Okay. He's the only one who can ever give you what you're looking for. No person, no man, no woman, no thing can ever do it. Mm -mm. No, and we need to accept who we are. See, it's, it's just like a direct violation against our Creator. And He created us to be who we are. And, and you know, it's time that we started standing up and saying how it is. We love everyone. We love the people who, you know, people who've gone through change. They had a little bit of self-gratification for a season, but after a while, yeah. you, you know, there's still the same issues there, even though they they yeah. they switch things. So again, I'm, we're not against those. We love everyone. But the bottom line is, start accepting who you are because God made you a peculiar person. Yeah. And uh, get to know who God's created you to be. Yeah. Uh, because that's the only answer. And here's the thing. Here's what the world wants us to all do. He wants us just to hold the door open as all these folks run into a burning, collapsing building. That's what the world wants us to oh, do. Oh, that is exactly what's going on right and now. Say, no, just go in. It's all good. 
run into the thing that's about to fall on you and burn yeah, you up. Yeah. But the one who loves you will say, don't go in. That's right. Don't run in. I'm closing this door and they'll hold you back and say, don't run into that nonsense. And so stop listening. Listen, don't let the world define you. Would you rather have the world define you or the one who created you define you? You know, there's a big difference. The world wants to define you until you let the creator show you who's the only one who knows who you are and who you're created to be. Truth is, we just gotta start speaking the truth. That's what's going on with our nation. So we're we doing got, right now. That's what we're, we're doing, doing right now. now. Telling you the truth. Some might, might be up. getting upset, but you know what? We love you, and we are not gonna reject anyone, no matter what you've done or where you come no from. What. Whether you're male or female, black or white, you've been jabbed or not jabbed, it doesn't make any difference <laughs> to us. So it, 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 it's because we got all kinds in this house. Yeah, we got everybody. We got every. We got every multicultural person here. But but I, I I tell you I'm just reminded of the scripture in Luke one seventeen, the Lord will reveal Himself. He will be the man with the spirit and power of Elijah. Come on, he's talking about the prophetic people that's going to rise up. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Now, this is talking about the very thing we're talking that's about. Good. This is a direct quote. He from the, will cause. That's right. That's pretty big. And it's a direct quote from the last scripture in the Old Testament mm -hmm. was the bridge into the New Testament. So we're, we're just telling you, quit trying to discover something that you're not. Come on. Quit just because we've got the scientific ability or we've got, we've got a law. Laws, there's God's law and there's man's law. I'm going to obey God's law. Come on. And God's law said, says, you know, let a man be who he is and a woman be who she is. And we're going to learn how to be accepted of the beloved. I mean, we're in the greatest moment of history, even though it looks like everything's falling down. Mm. You turn on the news, it is just absolutely heartbreaking. But you've got to keep your focus on the word Come and on. the promises of God and the things that God's amen. done. And hang out with people who believe like you Come do. Come on, amen. Don't hang out with a bunch of people who's just a bunch of compromisers and trying just to fit in. We don't need to fit in. We are the model. We yeah. are the Come ones on. that's on. supposed to be the standard bearers for who God is, what he's going to do. i tell you, we're going to see an awakening in this nation. We're going to quit killing babies. We're going to quit changing identity. We're going to quit doing a lot of things. I don't know how that's going to happen because it looks like, boy, we're at the end. Somebody. But I'm telling you, we're at the end of... To, to do the beginning. We're in the beginning of something new and fresh. This is the new faith. Faith and peace and truth is what we're working on right now. Somebody's got to tear down the altars in the high places. Uh, Why not us? That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's it. Amen, man. Yeah. Uh, should we let them go? Yeah, let's let them go. We, we love, messed them up. Enough. We love you guys. Uh, you know, share this with anybody that you feel might want to hear it or listen to it. And, um, you know, be blessed. We're praying that God's peace is with you, that you're, you're growing in faith. And that the goodness of God is all over you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.